I needed this. We all need this. Drinking water is crucial to our daily survival. So why do we flush our toilets with it? Wash our cars and our sidewalks with it? Did you know that half the water in an average household goes to watering outdoor plants? And industry uses a lot of water in steam generators, cooling towers, and all kinds of industrial processes. Wouldn't it be great if we used recycled water for at least some of this stuff? Well, we can, and we do. Welcome to the West Basin Municipal Water District's Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility in El Segundo, California. This one-of-a-kind water recycling plant produces designer water for irrigation, commercial, and industrial uses, and even groundwater protection, all in one location. It's a really cool process. The water starts out as city sewage, which is treated and cleaned by the Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant three miles away. 15% or 40 million gallons of Hyperion's treated wastewater is diverted to our facility instead of being discharged into the ocean. This water had already undergone two stages of treatment, so when it comes to us, we start with a third. This tertiary treatment can be a chemical reaction process done at the west part of the plant, or a physical removal of suspended solids in the water that's done at the east side of the plant. Let's look at the chemical process first. It starts with the pretreatment clarifier, where ferric chloride and a synthetic polymer are mixed with the incoming water that looks like this. Ferric chloride is a type of liquid iron, really heavy stuff, and the synthetic polymer is a kind of glue. When combined, the polymer glues the dirty particles in the water to the heavy ferric chloride, and the resulting clumps sink to the bottom. This is called flocculation. After mixing, the flocculated water goes into a settling basin. The lighter material rises to the top and is skimmed off by a pipe. Water then flows through weirs and then down into our monomedia gravity filter, which is basically a charcoal filter. This is what the 12 foot deep basin looks like empty. The bottom is covered with a layer of anthracite coal. The water filters down through the coal and then travels to our final disinfection area. Here, it gets disinfected and then pumped out to the pipeline distribution system for irrigation and additional treatment. This is great stuff for watering parks, highway medians, and corporate campuses, even for flushing toilets. Anytime you see purple pipes and uh, purple signs like this, that's recycled water being used. We also send some of this water to a facility which treats it for use in industrial cooling towers. The chlorination basin is covered by nearly 3,000 solar panels to help us power our facility. We don't waste any space, and we are mindful of our carbon footprint. Now remember how the water coming into our facility got split into a chemical and a physical separation process? That's because some of our customers need water that's as pure as drinking water and has a lower mineral content. And for that, we treat it with advanced filtration techniques. This basin is filled with arrays of microfiltration membranes. Each membrane is made up of thousands of hollow white fibers, like many drinking straws. The fiber walls have microscopic holes 5,000 times smaller than a pinhole. Vacuum suction pulls wastewater through the holes. Dirt and bacteria are too large to fit, but water squeezes through. It comes out pretty clean, but we go even further. We then pass it through a reverse osmosis membrane, where the holes are 5 million times smaller than a pinhole. That filters out large molecules like those found in shampoos, pesticides, minerals, and heavy metals. Then we send it for disinfection with hydrogen peroxide and ultraviolet light. Comes out clean enough to drink, but it's used as seawater intrusion barrier to protect our groundwater basin. This is where water is injected along the coast to create a pressurized mound of fresh water that keeps the ocean from migrating inland and contaminating local groundwater supplies. If we skip the disinfection step, the reverse osmosis water is perfect for use in low pressure boilers, which are used in oil refineries. But that's just not good enough for high pressure boilers, which are used in electricity production. They need ultra pure feed water. So we run the water through reverse osmosis a second time, and we come out with a product that's just as pure as distilled water. So there you have it. Two stages of purification before the water gets to us, chemical treatment and charcoal filtering to make irrigation water, more treatment in a separate facility to make cooling tower water, microfiltration and reverse osmosis for low pressure boilers, additional disinfection for groundwater injection, and a second pass through reverse osmosis for high pressure boilers. Whew, 
five types of designer water, all from recycled wastewater. What we do here is save drinking water for, well, drinking. And we provide industry with water that's even more pure than one of these. The Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility is where we make fit-for-purpose custom water qualities. We're increasing capacity, expanding distribution pipelines, and adding customers. Together, we're helping to shape the future of water reuse. For more information, visit us at westbasin.org.